I've already said that most, if not all of you, went to a presentation I did, um, the local economy days. Um, not everyone. OK, so I'll go over some of the essentials um, of doing economics first. And then at various moments, I'm going to kind of make some touch points into where I think it connects with art. Um, and I'd love to hear your views about it as well as artists. Um, so I'm going to first start by um, sort of sharing the, a bit of the context of, of where we see um, donor economics, uh, because it's um, the 20th century has not only started in a turbulent way with these repeated crises, uh, financial, climate, ecological, COVID, um, and, and so on, but it is a, it is a century which looks um, sort of quite foreboding as we as, as we go forward to how do we respond to the, um, the, the likely future that is gonna be ever more, um, throw challenges our way that are ever greater um, and are ever more of a sort of a global scale where we, where we need to be working on these challenges uh, together to overcome them. These crises are showing that we're interconnected um, with the natural world and with everyone on the planet. Um, and, so the, the idea of donor economics um, was born after the financial crisis saying, well, if we're gonna rethink economics because uh, the financiers got it wrong, um, sorry, if we're just gonna do it for the sake of financial markets, let's think about it from a, a holistic social and ecological perspective where we bring in the great ideas from feminist economics, ecological economics, complexity economics, behavioral economics, and bring them all together. And, and Kate says, have them dance on the same page. And, and what, what happens when, when we do that? And so Donut Economics was written as a book for these ever uh, more complex times um, that don't offer answers to uh, questions that we might have now, but actually they give us more a mindset uh, shift, um, invite a mindset shift that we need to be able to adapt to the ever more complex um, set, uh, decades that we're going to be living into. So it's um, the goal of the donut, but also seven ways to think uh, like a 21st century economist um, that I'll go into. And it's an idea that then gained lots, has gained lots of traction since it was launched in 2017 and has been translated into 14 languages, including Swedish. Oh, there it is. Um, and uh, so, yeah, what is it about this idea that um, seems to be gaining um, so much interest as an economic uh, alternative or collection of economic alternatives? Um, so here's a few pictures, creations that have been made by people around the world who've taken the idea of the donut and made it relevant to their uh, context or their culture or their place or their aspirations. And it really shows us that it's an idea that is um, inviting. Um, we say, well, people are scared of economics, but we know no one's scared of donuts. And it's it's visual. And so people can uh, come to it and, and sort of uh, change the color, change the shape, change the format and do lots of things with it while still keeping this uh, fairly fundamental idea, which I'll come on to uh, in a second. But um, I, so I guess the first touch point with art that I want to make is that um, uh, images are powerful. And I've just pulled up a few um, examples of how images shape, um, shape our world. So if we go back to the fourth century BC, think of Plato with his um, uh, earth centric universe, which was then sort of debunked um, in the 16th century uh, with Copernicus. Um, and reshaping um, our place in the in the universe, and then thinking about the the image that really uh, some say kicked off the environmental movement from Apollo eight when they uh, this called Earth uh, Earth Rise, and so um, all of these images are, are so powerful. And and, um, and Kate says actually in in uh, the first chapter of Donut Economics, um, she says how. Uh, she was so surprised how the donut, when she created it in 2011, gained so much traction straight away. Um, and then researching images, she was saying, our brains are wired for visuals. Half our nerve fibers in our brain are linked to our vision. And when our eyes are open, vision accounts for two thirds of electrical brain activity. Um, so whilst words are processed by our short term memory, um, when we only retain about seven bits of information, 
Images, on the other hand, go directly into our long-term memory, where she says they are indelibly etched. So the, the images shape our world. I mean, Instagram is, a, is a, an example of that with social media, I, I, I guess. And so having um, thinking about what a visual goal of the economy would be for, if we were to think about the um, economic goal that we have the moment that's causing these repeated crises. It's an economic goal that's based on the assumption that endless GDP growth is possible. And it's, um, it's a goal which is putting ever more pressure on the planet and causing yeah, ecological breakdown, financial breakdown, and the conditions for pandemics, etc. So what we offer with the donut is an alternative vision of the economy, which is a vision of balance and making the, the, the goal uh, very visual and appealing. Um, so the goal of the donor is to meet the needs of all people within the means of the living planet. Um, so the social foundation uh, represents the fundamentals uh, of living a good life. And these have been uh, sourced from the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so 193 governments have agreed to these. So everyone has a claim to meeting these needs. So we don't want anyone falling short on the essentials of life in the hole in the middle. But at the same time, we have an ecological ceiling beyond which we, we mustn't go. Um, climate change and biodiversity loss and ocean certification and all these nine um, dimensions from the planetary boundaries, which have been defined by earth system scientists. And so you take these two boundaries together and then we have this balance where we want to be in the green space in the middle, which is safe and just for humanity. But the idea of um, balance is not a new one. And if you were to look at traditional symbols, um, we see that balance is, is, is been, um, you know, throughout human history, the, the Taoist yin yang, the Mari Takarangi, the Celtic um, endless knot, uh, Buddhist uh, double spiral. Uh, spiral. It's, um, it's very intuitive, I think, um, to think of, of a goal of living in balance. Our bodies live in balance where we get too hot, we take an item of clothes off and we get too cold, we put one on, back on again. When we're too when we're hungry, we eat. When we get too full, we stop. So how can we design our economies to be in balance as well? Um, but also thinking back to, you know, that I mentioned Plato a moment ago and the Greek philosophers, um, the idea of the economy uh, came from, the word economy comes from oikos, meaning household, and nomos, meaning uh, the norms or management. So it was originally household management. And um, so oikos nomos. But we're now at a scale where we have planetary impact. Um, we're not just looking after our house, which is here on our street. We're not just looking after the city. We're not just looking after our country. We're actually recognizing the choices we make economically impact the world. We need to recognize our interconnectivity. Um, with everyone and the living planet. And so our oikos is the planet now. So, so it is a time for um, planetary uh, thinking. And so if this is the, um, the vision of balance, the goal that we want to aim for, we can also quantify all of these um, dimensions. And we can see that the red shows that we're not doing very well with the red in the middle uh, showing that billions of people are falling short in the essentials of life and the red on the outside showing that we're collectively overshooting on four, now five of the planetary boundaries because um, uh, air pollution has now been quantified. So it's a, it's a pretty bleak picture um, and it's the, we're the first um, generation to see this picture. And so it's our choice. Do we proceed with the economic thinking, business models, the public policies that have got us into this position of being out of balance? Um, or do we rethink, reimagine our economic models, um, business models, public policies to bring us back into balance from both sides. Uh, and so that's what we're do, trying to do with the Donut Economics Action Lab, offer this as a goal and help uh, connect people who want to explore uh, these ideas um, uh, to come together and work together on what these uh, possibilities might be. It's, we don't offer answers. We recognize there are a huge diversity of approaches that might help us come into balance, but we do sort of position some juicy questions to help people get there, which I'll come on to in a moment. Um, but this picture changes by country and every nation must transform, whether traditionally underdeveloped or, or developed nation, every nation is uh, a developing nation now, whether it is um, not meeting the needs of its people, you see there on the left, Malawi, people falling short um, in the inner ring there uh, of the donut, or you've got the other end of the spectrum, meeting a lot of people's needs, but actually dramatically overshooting your share of planetary boundaries. And you can explore this data for 150 nations um, in Leeds Good Life uh, website. There's the, the link here. 
and you can see that tracked over time as well. So strongly recommend uh, having a look at that. Um, so we give the goal of the donut, we offer the goal, but we also suggest there are two dynamics we, we need to transform to get into the donut. And we say that those are firstly to be regenerative by design, to bring us back within planetary boundaries, and to be distributive by design, design to enable everyone to meet their needs. So I'm just going to give a few examples of that, because these are some of the fundamental ideas of donut economics. So starting with regenerative design, we've inherited systems, linear degenerative industrial systems that take Earth's resources, make them into things, you know, put them into the pipe of production, use them maybe only once and then throw them away. And it's this take, make, use, lose linear system that's running down Earth's life supporting systems. And we need to take those linear arrows and turn them into circles where we are using Earth's resources, uh, um, resources far more carefully, collectively, um, creatively and slowly so that we are designing like nature designs because nature doesn't have waste. So how can we restore, remake, repair, reuse uh, the, the human made uh, materials that we, uh, from, from uh, the natural materials we transform. So how can we work with and within the cycles of the living world um, to be far more regenerative by design? Um, so what can that look like? Uh, it can be recognizing um, the need to transform our processes from landscape degradation to landscape uh, restoration um, and, and understanding what are our behaviors uh, and, and processes and systems that are, are doing one and how we can transform to the other. It's recognizing um, that uh, industries uh, don't, at the moment, uh, uh, waste is an externality. So how do we actually bring that in and recognize that there are many, many ways to repair, reuse, refurbish, restore at all kinds of scales from a city scale where policies are, um, promote circular design and collaboration across um, sectors and um, businesses, all the way down to a community scale where uh, repair cafes invite people to uh, learn a skill, get connected with your neighbors and repair things you might otherwise throw away. Um, other examples. Our lived, uh, our lived, our built environment, how we can recognize that um, we can bring nature back into uh, to these spaces here. And these are actual pictures. These aren't just kind of um, photoshopped images. You know, these are transformations that have, have happened um, to take away uh, polluting uh, dirty uh, city centers and restore nature's corridors. And uh, in hospitals as well, places for um, uh, our own healing. Actually, how can we bring in natural sort of health as well and, and, and this have a nature full hospital um, as an example. So that's um, regenerative design. Um, the other we, uh, one we talk about is um, distrib uh, distributive design. And we've inherited uh, systems that are deeply divisive where um, value and opportunity are captured in the hands of uh, a few. Um, so in the last decade, the number of billionaires has doubled from 1,000 to 2,000. And it's a, um, a pattern that is repeated um, uh, throughout the, the economy in all kinds of ways. So how can we actually design our economies so that they are distributive by design so that value and opportunity are, um, co uh, are shared amongst all those who co-create it? And so it's recognizing you know, who who owns the, the land, who owns the sources of wealth creation from that land and who has a choice on where that goes, you know, who owns their housing and uh, who owns the businesses and how can we, um, how can we think about that in a pre-distributive um, way? So some examples of that. Um, so businesses, yeah. So those that are, uh, have a, um, are, are profit um, focused, profit led, how can we change them to be mission led? Uh, with a purpose primacy, such as employee-owned businesses? Um, how can we think of um, production instead of being globalized and centralized? How can we think of ways to share ideas so that they can be produced uh, locally without having to, to trans transform them, um, uh, transport them? The idea of Cosmo local production is based on the ideas that um, atoms are heavy. You know, you think of the chair, very heavy, but um, ideas are light. So share the ideas and then make the product locally. And so you get um, WikiHouse being a great example of a local uh, design. 
Um, more, more examples of uh, distributive design, how you can um, put uh, access to transport in the hands of uh, many people through public transport, prioritizing that, and then thinking about the places we live and can we design to have all of our needs met within a 15 minute uh, walkable uh, city. Um, so those are just two of the uh, ways of thinking about um, how we can get into the donut. That's regenerative design and distributive design. And so at Donut Economics Action Lab, what we're doing is we've created a website and everyone can uh, join and read about these ideas and uh, understand ways in which they can apply them in their place. And we like to think of it as a commons of knowledge and practice where uh, there are stories of people um, putting these ideas into practice to inspire others just like themselves. And so what does it look like? What does it look like when um, thousands of people around the world uh, put these ideas into practice? And amazingly, this is what it looks like. And this doesn't really look like a traditional sort of economics kind of uh, um, poster wall, if you like. Um, there are policymakers here, there are educators, community organizers, um, entrepreneurs, all kinds of uh, people are being drawn to these ideas and are choosing to explore them in many creative ways. They're seeing um, it as a very accessible, inviting um, uh, goal, if you like, of the donut, but also now they're getting into what's it mean to think regeneratively and distributively uh, about our place, about our enterprises, about our communities and our schools. Um, so, it's yeah, it's just great to see these uh, these ideas keeping on surprising us about how creative people can be when when we give these ideas away for free and invite them to to share back their stories. So we, um, if I were to crudely categorize the sort of content we have on the the website, um, one set is is learning about the ideas. So we have um, tools to to explore understand what the donut's about, um, understand what regenerative distributive design is, um, think of creative ways to explore that um, with, your, uh, with your peers. Um, but we also have tools to actually then apply those. And I'm gonna share in a moment the, uh, the tools to transform places, um, but we also have tools to um, transform organizations and thinking about the way in which we look at almost like the DNA of enterprise and say, you need to ultimately transform how you're set up if you're going to transform um, what you're able to create. But when I think about um, DEAL, Don't Economics Action Lab, it's got the word lab in the name. And to me that, well, it's got a scientific connotation and we're deliberately a lab because we are, everyone's experimenting with these ideas. And we recognize that we don't know what's possible until we practice it. So we um, say 21st century economics is going to be practiced first and theorized later. And so we iterate and evolve and adapt the, uh, the practice according to what people are learning. But I, I kind of think from a community and from an art perspective, it's, it's it, um, maybe less about kind of the technical lab. And I think if a few other metaphors I want to throw your way. Uh, one is the bakery, the, the community bakery, where everyone's invited to um, get, them, get their hands uh, dirty and uh, get involved with the recipes of applying these ideas. And when you start baking, obviously a donut is baked as well. It smells great. And so the economy that we can create tastes better, smells better. It's more inviting. Everyone can get involved. Another one is the playground. And here's a picture from kids playing with uh, donut economic ideas in Birmingham in the UK. And so play is something that has almost been releg I say relegated, sort of kept in the realm of child's play. And uh, play is the way that we learn about the world. And it's the way we, um, uh, we, yeah, we, as children, we learn um, our, 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 our limits. We, we learn um, uh, everything through play. And I think if we're to rethink economics, we need to learn how to play in powerful ways uh, as, as you know, all of the people in society. So how do we create spaces um, to enable people to play with these ideas where we banish this idea of things being right or wrong uh, first time and actually give people permission um, to, to not know and step into the uncertainty that play uh, is so uh, wonderful uh, to, um, at, at creating. So the playground. Um, and then the last one, which is maybe more relevant for today, today is the artist studio. 
and uh, whether donor economics is a inviting sort of community uh, artist studio where everyone's welcome to bring their own uh, technique and brushstrokes and, and, and crafting kind of method. And we, we see that come through already. There's so many um, creative avenues that people are bringing uh, to donor economics, whether you know painting or sewing or uh, crocheting or um, creating a, a book or uh, all these different all these different things. And so there's something about it which is um, is enormously welcoming. So the 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 thing that I enjoy uh, marrying together is the powerful idea of the donut with the playful methods, the playfully powerful combination. I think then leads to more people entertaining these concepts, and the more people that are able to feel welcome to participate in an economic conversation, which is vital to have everyone's view, because if not everyone's involved in the conversation, we're not going to be able to create and design economies that are fit for everyone. So essentially, the holistic and interconnected goal of the donut really invites holistic, interconnected methods that invite everyone to participate in them as well. So that's where one of the key uh, ways I think that art has a role uh, to play in economics. But also, you know, big art installations um, that help people think and experience things differently, like Olafur uh, Eliasson's Ice Watch, um, where people could touch Arctic ice, 12 pieces of Arctic ice that then melted in front of their eyes. And it had a very uh, you know, uh, impactful, um, uh, um, it was very impactful on the people. It sort of goes beyond the cognitive into the felt experience. Um, but also the um, aesthetic of art as well, to, the, the power to sort of touch us in ways that um, we can't uh, get from, from many other ways. And this is a, a beautiful donut uh, uh, installation that's been um, created. It's actually um, mimicking the, the sort of the torus shape, which is like a 3D um, donut. And so art has so many um, touch points with, uh, with donut economics and people are yeah, coming to it in many, many ways. I'm just going to check how I'm doing on time before I move on to the next bit, whilst you set at this beautiful <laughs> um, image. Great, got about 20 minutes, I think. Um, so, moving on. What I'd like to do now is talk about um, the practical application of donor economics to a place. And to do this, we have this uh, interesting shift from thinking about the donut as humanity's goal, which is shaped like a donut. And then we say, well, what if we unroll it? And actually it turns into something that's a bit more like a baguette. Um, but we keep the social foundation and the ecological ceiling. And then we, we squish it together and we bring in a local and a global dimension to things whilst keeping the social foundation and ecological ceiling. And so the question we then say is, can we create a space in the donut to imagine a possible futures uh, for, our, for our place that are compatible with help bringing humanity into the donut. And it's that space we then think uh, can, can open up uh, like a canvas, if you like, for pouring in our creativity, our ideas, our lived experience, data, um, all that kind of thing into, uh, into it. So I'm gonna just talk through that as a, as a conception. Um, so the big question we, we asked then is how can our place become home to thriving people in a thriving place while respecting the well-being of all people and the health of the whole planet. So it's a big question that we then divide into uh, these four areas um, represented by these, these four lenses on life, as we call it. So the first is, how can all the people of our place thrive? The second, how can our place be as generous as the wild land next door? Then how can our place respect the health of the whole planet? And finally, how can our place respect the well-being of all people? So if we take the two on the left, these can be our local aspirations, a local aspiration of what it means for our people to thrive in a thriving place. But we mustn't stop there. We've got to think about the other two, which are our global responsibilities, because our place is centered in his center to, is positioned in, in a very interconnected way. We draw in energy and matter from our communities around the world and we give out waste, um, and which, which is impacting everyone too. So we need to understand our global interconnections 
uh, and how that impacts the health of the whole planet and the well-being of all people. So we have to look at these four lenses if our place is to help um, humanity get into the donut. And so it's, um, we can bring in uh, all kinds of uh, things to help us look at these four lenses. And we have offer up about 40 different dimensions as well. The, the donut is based on 12 social dimensions and nine planetary dimensions, but actually we bring in additional dimensions here that we can begin to quantify, find data for, um, set targets for, and see what the indicators need to be uh, as to how well we're doing to actually uh, get into the space of the donut. So going into to each of these lenses one by one, the first one, how can all the people of this place thrive? So what does it mean to the people of your place to thrive? And that's a, a, gonna be a unique thing uh, wherever, uh, wherever you are, but whose voices are not being heard at the moment? And how can you design uh, methods to, 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 to welcome all voices of your place? COVID was a, a crisis for, for many places, for everywhere. And what did COVID make visible that was previously uh, hidden away? So what are, the, what are the things that were brought into higher contrast by, by the COVID crisis? But also what's the, the hidden strength of your place that you can bring to the fore, cultural uh, things that you can, uh, that make life so worth living in your place? Secondly, how can this place be as generous as the wildland next door? So whilst the global donut has the planetary boundaries, there are no social, there are no planetary boundaries for your, your town or your city or your region or your, your, your country. So how do you think about um, what the, the boundary of your place can be? So we say, go to the wildland next door, go to the place where nature designs at its best in your locality and do your best to mimic nature's genius there. So take nature as your mentor and your measure to understand how you can clean the air, house biodiversity, store carbon, cycle water, harvest energy, regulate the temperature, build soil and enhance well-being. So what is the generosity of, of, of the wildland next door? And how can you design to store carbon, harvest solar energy, better manage water and build soil? Now, how can you welcome, how can you create more spaces to welcome uh, more wildlife and to build back the biodiversity of your place? So that can be a thriving place for your thriving people. So moving to the global responsibilities, how can this place respect the health of the whole planet? And so this is where we recognize that our actions do impact by emitting um, carbon through transport and heating. So how can we decarbonize um, those systems? How can we also cut the waste and create circular economies that are more regenerative by design? How can we produce more uh, food locally to reduce global impact and, and also our individual lifestyles? How can we look at those and recognize the impacts they're having? Right, lastly, um, how can this place respect the well-being of all people? And um, this is the, one of the hardest ones to, to think about because it's so, it's so disconnected from our everyday life. But think about the products. I have a phone here. Think about the labor behind uh, this product. Think about cultural connections and how we create solidarity. Think about the, the impacts on communities around the world from um, uh, climate change. And, and also recognizing um, uh, migration and um, how we can better well, uh, welcome um, and, and those seeking safety and refuge. So those are the, the four lenses. And when viewed together, they create a space for us to, 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 to think holistically and think in interconnection. So we can start drawing connections uh, across all of the four lenses and recognizing um, how one thing affects another and everything is uh, everything we draw here is actually just a, a wonderfully complex system. And if we can just exercise those muscles of thinking holistically, thinking interconnectedly, we're going to design economies that are far more fit for um, the complexities of the 21st century. And we're going to build what we say is a portrait of our place that can help humanity get into the donut. So I'm going to um, show some ways that um, communities and uh, people are starting to now think of this. So they're putting on their uh, on their the, each of these four lenses and these these different canvases. Um, things like the change is already underway, moving to into, into the donut, the challenges that are stopping us, and current targets and indicators um, that can show how well we're doing. So these initial perspectives are a good starting point. But then we can um, go further and actually not look for answers immediately, but actually deepen our understanding of these four lenses through questions. 
So what does regeneration look like? How do we part, who's, who's currently storing ecological wisdoms and passing those on? Uh, what alternatives uh, do exist? Um, who in our place is helping others thrive? There's so many questions that we can, uh, we can bring that we don't necessarily have to jump to answer straight away. We can look at the history of our place and recognize uh, the trajectory we've been on and, and, and sort of the, the cultures that come to our place that have shaped uh, our place as it is today and the trajectory of where, we're, where we might be going in the future. Um, and getting a sense of this place. So um, really uh, understanding the, the, the felt experience of being in our place. And I think art has a huge role to play here too. So um, going on a, a walk around your neighborhood and, 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 and um, getting a, a feel with the people of your place, you know, what are the qualities? What are the, what are the, the things when you really open all of your senses um, to, to your, your lived environment, um, uh, the, both the people and, and the place? And so you build these things up and you um, begin to get a, a, a rich picture, uh, what we call the portrait of your, of your place on this, this canvas. So that's kind of a, a nice artistic metaphor. And everyone can bring their own kind of uh, uh, experiences to this, their questions, their understanding, um, their aspirations, and they can all be um, contributed uh, to this, this um, uh, process of creating a portrait together. And they can be used to then uh, identify connections. So people might immediately think that oh, electric cars are great because they clean the air locally and they provide mobility. But actually, when we look at some of the global connections, we recognize that they're undermining the, um, the, the well-being of the communities where, where some of the um, products are sourced. So it's, it's a good way of revealing um, some of the things that might immediately be hidden um, so that it can, uh, if we just look at the local aspiration, it can mask that complexity. Uh, of, of what uh, what your your place's impact on the world. So drawing those interconnections is a is a great great um, thing to do with the um, the portrait as well. And you can put a specific project in the middle as well. A topic uh, you could put a sector like food or housing or transport or energy. Or you could look at a project like an urban farm and and draw the connections across um, all of the lenses this way. So recognizing it might not just provide healthy food, but it's doing things in all of the lenses that are supporting um, uh, moving, into, moving into the donut. Um, and so this is a, a process that's being put into practice by cities around the world. Here are pictures of policymakers using the four lens uh, methodology in Portland, Philadelphia, and Amsterdam. And they were the pioneers uh, to, to create this process, but now they've um, inspired so many cities around the world to do the same thing. In lockdown, here's Toronto sort of using this portrait methodology to amongst policymakers to kind of map out their targets and challenges and good things already underway. And we have we had our first peer-to-peer uh, -peer cities learning call um, uh, about four weeks ago, and we had about 40 um, cities around the world uh, attend that. And there are so many different ways that they're now beginning to use this perspective and learning uh, different methods as we go. So that's the kind of the lab element. We have constantly um, experimenting and sharing back and understanding what's possible when we think in this holistic way. But also communities, like the bottom-up perspective, so much energy to explore the economics, um, the holistic thinking that way too. So here we've got pictures from Amsterdam and Guildford and Birmingham. And, um, and Rio de Janeiro uh, and, and running uh, workshops that, that hear the voice of all the people in a place. And this is where I, I, I say that, you know, bring play, bring play. And so top right, that's a workshop where we threw down rope and everyone was holding the rope together and then hula hooping with donuts and kind of writing on chalkboards and things like that. And it really, when you're using different methods, it really invites people to, to think differently. And this is the, the picture from Birmingham where they're literally dancing around the, the space of the donut to explore what it means to their place and then exploring the four lenses of the donut too and inviting everyone to sort of post their, their views. And so they're, they're creating a neighborhood uh, a donut for their, yeah, for their, for their place. Um, and here's a, a workshop um, in one of the, the communities in, in Rio de Janeiro. But also we have not only just this top down policymaker perspective and bottom up sort of grassroots, we have networks forming around the ideas too, that are connecting all of the actors in a place, connecting the grassroots, connecting the policymakers, connecting the business and academics and educators and saying, what happens when we all work around this, these, um, these challenges and this way of thinking together? 
and they are connecting they're convening they're inviting they're not pointing fingers but they're saying what does it mean when we we sit with these challenges what does it mean when we collaborate on them uh, here's a picture from amsterdam with the amsterdam donut coalition inviting all of these actors together to explore the four lenses in this instance on the window of one of their city venues and the conversations that come out of that um, are of a different nature um, than the sort of the siloed approach and sort of the fixing the problem approach. They're actually like, what are the what are the bigger systemic challenges that we can all work together on? And I think this is a this is my last slide because this is the the Curacao donut economy, and I just love this slide because they uh, are inviting um, the the great diversity of roles that everyone can can come to this challenge. So we. We uh, take up roles both individually and collectively. Um, within donor economics, we talk about the multiple economic hats you wear. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you're in the household, you're you're um, uh, providing you know care for your family. Uh, when you when you leave, you are you know you're going to work and you're maybe operating in the market. You, you maybe uh, at the weekend you might be a protester or a voter or something like that operating in the state. And then you might be involved with an after school club or you might be doing something in your local community and being part of the commons and you're you're entertaining all these different economic roles and so what we recommend with donor economics it's just inviting all of these roles to the uh to and all these perspectives to to work together so what's the role that you would bring to this as artist uh, so just i guess to, to summarize just a few of the the things i mentioned so we've got the the donut as a as a goal that we offer for humanity to meet the needs of all people within the means of the living planet, where if we follow the um, design dynamics of regenerative design and distributive design, we believe that that's going to help bring humanity back into balance. When we're thinking about our place, how do we, how does our place help humanity get into the donut? And we, we can think holistically from a social ecological, but also our local aspirations and global responsibilities and create a portrait of our place. Um, that is holistic, it's interconnected and inviting. And then how do we create the methods that invite all people to be a part of that? How do we uh, recognize, recognize the multiple ways of, of being, of seeing, of, uh, of doing that can, that can welcome all and, and the different roles that, that we can pick up and play within that? Um, so just to, just to then to share the website, donoreconomics.org. Uh, we have these the five key themes, communities and art, cities and places, education and research, enterprise and uh, business and enterprise, then government and policy. And there you can connect with others uh, and, and uh, we'll soon be publishing uh, the network pages for all of these different networks applying the ideas. And you can see all of the different stories to inspire, tools to act and uh, join events to connect with others and, and co-create new ideas together. Okay, so um, yeah, that's as much as I'll share now. And I think I've got five minutes for. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rob. Now I just wanted to use my nice like emojis. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage everyone to do that. Uh, thank you so much for your talk. I'm uh, just as inspired as uh, last time I heard you. And this time I really feel like this type of work with the Donut Economics uh, Lab, all the methods that you have is something that we should really try and implement in the village that uh, many of us here listening today, and especially me and Mia working with uh, like art and sustainable development of this place. So 